Configuring Exchange Server Hybrid Deployment Step by Step. Hello, my name is Faisal, and once again I'm producing this video for my website itsense.com or my YouTube channel itsense. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone whoever is watching this video, and this video tutorial is about, as I said earlier, and the title suggests is configuring hybrid deployment, which is between your on-premises Exchange Server and with Office 365, aka Exchange Online. Hybrid deployment is ideally, if you ask my opinion, it's the best way of migrating from on-premises to Exchange of Online or Office 365 because it allows you to migrate at your own pace. Cutover migration, on the other hand, it's like a one-shot or one-go migration. Uh, ideal for small size businesses. And once you do that, you need to finish it over a period of time. Uh, synchronize everything, Outlook profile needs to be recreated, OST needs to be resynced. So there is lots of hassle involved in that. And you have to make a decision that, okay, now I want to cut over things from on-premises to Office 365, that's it. Hybrid, on the other hand, you can do a setup and take your time to migrate from your on-premises to Exchange, either completely or maybe not. You can stay as it is. Maybe that's the best way for your organization. You have, let's say, 2,000 employees, and you want to move 1,000 of them to Exchange Online or Office 365, and thousands of and the rest of the mailboxes you want to keep on premises for whatever reasons, maybe licenses, licensing restriction. This year, let's say you can afford to have only 1000 license, and next year you may buy some more license and move, or maybe there are some mailboxes that, due to some legal reasons, you want to keep them on premises. So whatever the case is, hybrid deployment is the best possible option in this case. Once you set up your environment for hybrid deployment or for hybrid configuration, it provides several facilities or enable your environment for single sign-on or same sign-on. Single sign-on, of course, you will do the Active Directory Federation services, or you can use same sign-on, which is using uh, Microsoft Azure AD Connect. It can sync your password, you know, from your on-premise Active Directory to Microsoft Azure Active Directory, which is used by Office 365 and Exchange Online. Seamless integration means you will have a global address list and your Office 365 mailboxes recipients as well as on-premises mailbox recipients will all appear in global address lists. Uh, calendaring sharing is also possible using Federation Trust, which is automatically created by Office 365 hybrid deploy exchange hybrid deployment configuration wizard mail flow will automatically be configured and created between on-premises exchange organization and office 365 and easy to administer means single point of administer administration once the hybrid deployment configuration is complete using your exchange admin center you can go to office 365 tab and manage office 365 settings from there. You can migrate mailboxes both ways from on-premises to Exchange Online as well as from Exchange Online to on-premises. 
you can always take advantage of built-in security and message hygiene of Office 365. Organization mail flow can be changed that instead of your on-premises exchange server to receive messages in call incoming messages directly from internet, you can direct the email flow to Office 365 that any incoming message to your organization will be delivered to Office 365 first. All the antivirus scanning, anti-malware scanning, and message hygiene or anti-spam and everything, all these processes will be performed by Office 365 servers. And then it will be passed over. Depends in case if this recipient is on-premise mailbox. It will be passed over to your on-premise exchange server. That's the good way because Office 365 security is best of the class and there are many options that you can uh, customize it and modify it based on your organization requirement. So I will strongly suggest to have an email flow directed to Office 365. So all incoming messages for your organization should go to Office 365 servers first for all message high messaging hygiene and security filtering. Another benefit as I say, no Outlook profile recreation is required. Once the mailbox is moved, you will see in a demonstration that user will receive a message, a, a pop-up for Office 365 where they have to just type their password and a message that they need to close the Outlook and open again, which is like restarting Outlook. Just Outlook, not the computer. And when they will restart the Outlook, it will be automatically be configured for Office 365 mailbox. And no need for profile recreation, no need for OST resync. So this is another benefit and advantage of hybrid deployment. For this lab topology, uh, it's this is a very simple topology I have. It's similar like in my video series of exchange cutover migration. Uh, one domain controller, which is also a DNS server. One server running Azure AD Connect which I will use for same sign-on and Microsoft Exchange Server 2016 with a third-party certificate installed. All my virtual directories, including MRS proxies, configured for mail.itsense.net with an exception of autodiscover, which is autodiscover.itsense.net. At the end, of course, I would like the email flow to be directed to Office 365 server. So Office 365 servers, after performing all message hygiene, will pass the message to my on-premise exchange. If it's destined to Office 365 mailbox, it will be delivered right there. So nothing special. Uh, internal client, of course, running Outlook 2016 on Windows 10. So this is my lab setup, very simple, uh, nothing fancy. I'm using Office 365 uh, evaluation subscription uh, to perform this, to demonstrate this. Uh, you can also subscribe for a 30 days evaluation and test it out. These are the hybrid configuration requirements. You need to have on-premise exchange server 2010, 2013, or 2016 with third-party SSL certificate and MRS proxy enabled. If you have exchange 2007 or prior, then you can't do hybrid configuration. You need to go for a staged migration. I will show you how to enable MRS proxy uh, in, this video, in, in my demonstration. For 
to, I mean, to save time, I have already installed SSL certificate on my Exchange 2016 server. If you need to know how to install the, the, the certificate on Exchange server, you can always go back to my Exchange 2016 video series where I have demonstrated step by step how to do that. Adding and verifying domain with Office 365, I have already added and verified my domain itsense.net with Office 365. And again, if you need to know how to do that, you can go back to my ex uh, Office 365 cutover migration series where I have a separate video about how to add and verify domain with Office 365. And you can use that as a reference. Then I will set up Azure AD Connect for same sign-on and I will select the checkbox that this is for the hybrid deployment. And after the sync, uh, once the sync will take place, directory synchronization and user representation will be there in Azure AD. Uh, I will show you how to assign license. It's very simple. I have already uh, demonstrated that in previous uh, cut over migration series. Then the interesting part will start where we will config, start configuring hybrid configuration wizard or running hybrid configuration wizard. Hybrid configuration wizard will make all the required changes like create appropriate connectors, um, creating federation trust, and all that. And it will enable. Uh, my on-premise organization as an as an extension of my office 365 uh, domain so they both become sort of one entity so there will be centralized global address list calendar sharing mail flow as well as management i will be able to manage um, office 365 configuration from my on-premise exchange admin center from from there there is a tab called office 365 you can click on that and then you will be able to see and manage office 365 configurations then i will show you how to migrate a mailbox from on-premises to exchange online or office 365 and you will see that the user which in my case i will use let's say mark records uh, is outlook profile wasn't will not require any recreation or reconfiguration. Outlook profile will automatically be redirected to Office 365 once the mailbox will move from on-premise to Office 365. And finally, to change the mail flow so that all incoming messages for your organization delivered to Office 365 servers first, you need to make necessary DNS changes in your public DNS so that all your incoming messages goes to Office 365 so that they can get, you know, cleaned up or processed for antivirus, anti-malware, anti-spam. Again, I have already sh showed that in cutover migration, how to make DNS changes. Office 365 provides you a list of rec DNS records that, that either you can create manually by yourself or if you provide appropriate credentials to your domain registrar, it can log in on your behalf and create it. It can use your credentials and create those records on your behalf. You don't have to do that. Uh, depends what whichever way you want to go as long as the records are properly created it will work so this is it and now i think it's demo time in the demonstration as i said i will show you step by step from azure ad connect to exchange uh, hybrid configuration wizard as well as testing few steps I have done it already like domain is already registered and verified in Office 365 as well as I have already installed a third-party SSL certificate on my exchange as I said earlier so yeah let's move to demo